All right, so today we are going to disassemble a Smith & Wesson MMP, and then we'll put it back together. So, as always, first things first, let's make sure it's clear. So we're going to inject the magazine. Magazine's out. Nothing in there. Open the slide. And it's kind of hard to see. So let me get a, a light going. This, there's nothing in the chamber, and you can see the uh, fabric underneath. All right, so firearm is clear. Now, to take this apart, it is a blowback operated 22 caliber. Um, so you have your takedown lever here, um, and with this. You actually pull this down, and then you're going to pull it up, okay? With it up, next step, pull it all the way back, and then you come up, and you come forward, and then that disassembles the gun. So, you have your recoil rod here, you have your recoil spring here, um, this is your takedown lever. Now, if we look inside... All right, this is going to be your hammer. You have your safety on the side here. This is going to be your slide stop. So it stops the slide from going back forward again. Your barrel is actually fixed. Now you can't take it off, but it's a, a pin that you have to drive out, and then that'll pick it up from there. Uh, this is your takedown lever. Here's your ramp. There is your uh, extractor groove, barrel, and then your muzzle, okay? Um, and pretty much, for most of the time, this is as far as you're going to take it down. Now, I don't know if you can see in there or not. So, the chamber is pretty clear in regards to carbon buildup. Okay, um, anytime this ramp is nice and shiny, you have your carbon picked up from there. But however, on the inside, um, there's a fair amount of carbon built up down below. Now that doesn't necessarily affect the firing of the of the gun itself. Okay, I'm going to set this off to the side. When you look at the slide itself, okay, so on this top surface here. Um, that cutout is where your firing pin comes from, all right? And then you have your extractor right here, the piece that's moving. And remember, with a blowback gun, the purpose of the extractor is to keep the cartridge on the bolt face, right? Um, you know, these guns operate on a vacuum, so the vacuum pulls uh, the cartridge from the chamber. Now, this piece in here, so this is what's going to interface with your uh, hammer, as I've told you, that's here, uh, to cock it when it uh, recoils, and then you have your disconnector back here, which is going to make sure that, you know, it's working safely, and then you can see your firing pin right here. Now, these particular firearms um, you know, the one of the parts that fails uh, the most is actually that firing pin spring. That spring is underneath this unit. To get that unit out, you have to drive out this pin, and then um, you can shift this and pull it out. Um, and getting it out is not a problem. Getting it back in is a real bugger because it just doesn't uh, go back together very well. Um, places that tend to get really dirty is going to be your breech face here, um, the extractor itself. Uh, my wife always takes my uh, t-shirts that she doesn't want me to wear anymore and turns them into gun rags for me. So um, invariably I end up with all, all these extra uh, little bits of uh, fabric, which is nice for cleaning your firearms. Um, the other thing that's good about that is that with uh, 
with these if if they're a good size and they haven't torn completely apart uh, you are able to reuse them um, get a laundry bag not the one that your uh, significant other uses and put them in there to wash them and make sure you wash them by themselves because you don't want to get any of the oil carbon grime any of that kind of stuff over your lady's clothes you do that and i guarantee she will let you know how displeased she is or how he is as the case may be all right but pretty much folks that is the process of disassembling the smith and wesson mmp 22. Now, when it goes into cleaning, um, there are a number of different tools that are out there, and, and different people have different processes that they go through. Um, when we're looking at uh, cleaning the barrel, and uh, we have to really understand what those components are. So, first thing you have what's called your bore brush. Now, your bore brush is either copper, brass, or stainless steel. I don't recommend the stainless steel. Um, steel sharpened steel. Uh, but it also wears it down. Copper and brass won't mess with the rifling of the barrel. Um, then you have a patch loop. Then you have a jag. There are three different uh, examples of jags here. Um, these two are brass and this one's plastic. The purpose of a jag is to hold the patch um, on it so that uh, when you push it through, the jag itself forces that uh, patch into the bore. So, for example, this point is going to go through, and then from there, you know, I'm going to push it into the barrel. Now, the the patch jag is slightly undersized, so a 22 caliber patch jag is going to be slightly under 22 caliber because the material that you're using is actually going to fill up the rest of that gap, right? So if we think about process, first process uh, is we're going to take our patch loop and we're going to put a loop, uh, a patch through the loop. We're going to put oil on it and then we're going to run this inside the barrel. Think about like uh, brushing your teeth, right? So um, you're going to put toothpaste on the toothbrush, right? So, and then you're, you're going to start brushing your teeth. So this is the, the toothpaste, getting the toothpaste into all the nooks and crannies. Um, and then once that's done, you're going to run your bore brush through. The bore brush will then break up any carbon deposits that happen to be inside the barrel and clean that up. And then once that's done, three or four passes, um, or if it's really dirty, multiple. And then you use a patch jag, and you push the patch jag through using a new patch each time until the patch comes out clean. Um, and then at that point, use a new rag. So take the old patch out, put a new patch in, put a light coating of oil on it, and then run it through. Okay? Now you can use these. Um, I don't... Uh, particularly care for these swab the cotton swabs uh, mainly because uh, once they get dirty um, the only way to clean it really is to wash it and you wash it and then the metal rusts and so that creates its own set of problems but some people swear by them so that's an option for you as well um, toothbrushes are also very good uh, implements for um, cleaning your firearm, just make sure it's not the one that you normally brush your teeth with, as well as dental picks. If you have a dentist in the family or a friend who's a dentist or you know somebody who knows somebody who happens to be a dentist, then you can uh, get these dental tools um, because they're going to throw them away. So uh, that way you can have the dental tools available for you to be able to scrape and get into nooks and crannies to clean out any kind of carbon buildup. All right. Now, um, and then rods, ideally you want to run a brass rod. This rod happens to be aluminum with a, a brass uh, coating on it, uh, but truly you want, to, you want to run a brass rod. Uh, steel rods can damage or scratch the inside, and um, aluminum rods will bend, but brass rods, on the other hand, won't damage the gun itself. All right, now for putting this back together, first things first is we're going to start with our frame. Now, 
it's a little bit difficult to see, but in there, here, let me get a light. There we go. See that opening at the bottom there? That opening is for the tail end of your recoil rod assembly. So this is going to slide down in and flat side up, curve side down. So you can see that again. Okay, flat side, see how it's flat? And then curve side down. Have that in place. Then we take our recoil spring, we put our recoil spring on, and then what we're going to do is we're going to catch the recoil spring in this hole here while we feed the barrel through that hole. So catch here and then feed the barrel through, and then we come all the way back where we push it down and then we allow it to come forward. Once it comes forward, we push in and up, and then we'll check it to make sure it's good to go, right? And then at that point, we can put in our magazine, which obviously has no ammo, and just to be sure, again, no ammunition in the chamber, and nothing in the magazine well, right? And so that's a disassembly and reassembly of a Smith & Wesson MMP-22.